Hi, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays. Today we are going to talk about iControl REST query parameters. And so there's a lot of things you can do with iControl REST that don't require query parameters at all. You can pull like pool members and virtuals, iRules, and you just want to get an entire set of data. However, if you want to refine that to some capacity or you're looking for particular uh, fields within objects, then uh, query parameters is where you want to start. And so the custom query parameters that we have on the iControl REST API are options. And what options allow you to do, uh, take for example the TMSH uh, show sys connections command. So if you're going to do that from the command line, that is show sys, of course that's in TMSH, but if you're doing it from the bash shell, TMSH show sys connections, and then you might have some options to limit that. For example, I've got up here, uh, I've got this web bot coming from 10.0.0.10.51.285, and I want to see all the connections specific to this, to this IP and port combination. On TMSH command line, I would then do client side, client, adder of, get out of the way, 10.0.0.10, so come to the other side, and then the client side, client port of 51.285. And so when I do that, I've got this big long command line. Now how do I translate that into the API? Well, that is done. You get your base command of your, your big IP, IP, and then management PM sys con, okay? And then from there, you're like, oh, how do I translate this into an API call? And that's where the query parameters come in for the options. So you have your question, options equal, and then you put this in there after the equal sign, but you separate these with a plus. And so you take what is on the command line, and that becomes your, so this is your query parameter, and this is your query value. This becomes your query value. And that's how the options keyword works for the iControl REST API. All right, so that's one example here. Now, some of the other options, and we won't go into a whole bunch of examples for the rest of them, but you also have the ver, and this is for version, and this is to keep consistency in TMOS versions. So when you do a ver equals, sorry, that would be, 11.5.0, so I mean, you're making a query that's specific to the 11.5 version. And so if you want to add that parameter as an 11.6.0, and that's so if your big IP moves from 11.5 to 11.6 to 12.0 and whatever version's down, but your query parameters are all attached, I'm sorry, your requests are attached to a specific version, it uh, provides some consistency in the results that you'll get returned. Moving on to uh, another custom parameter, and that's expand, this is a capital S, subcollections. And so you have a collection of objects that's like a virtual servers, um, pools, and iRules, those are collections. Within a pool, you have pool members, and that would be a, a subcollection. So if you make a, a query, So you're going to query all the pools. Then you're going to get the results. It's going to show you what the pool is, but then it's, it's not going to show you what the pool members are in that because the pool members are subcollections. So something you can do is you can add your question mark and then 
expand subcollections equal true. And then when it returns all that pool data, it's going to expand the subcollection of pool member. So when you get that data back, you're going to actually get the pool members as well. So that's what the expand subcollections uh, query parameter is. Also with the API is the, uh, some of the O data. Uh, this is the open data protocol for REST. And so some of the uh, O data uh, query parameters are top and skip and select and filter. Now there are more within the OData protocol uh, definition, and even there's more you can do with filter in the OData standard. With filter, that's limited to um, filtering down to partitions. So you would use filter only in the context of uh, refining all of your return results to a specific partition. For top and skip, this is to page through data. And so if you specify top, then it's going to return uh, so you would do uh, top equals, so you've got your question mark, um, top equals 10. And what that's going to do is it's going to return the top 10 or the, you know, the first 10 of that collection of results. So if you have 150 pool members, or I mean, sorry, pools defined, then, and you put a query parameter of top 10, it's going to give you the first 10. And when it does that, it's going to also send you the, uh, how many total items are in that collection, how many were returned in this result, and then also a skip parameter. And what that does is that uh, skip is assumed zero if you don't provide it. But if you, if you put in the top 10, then with your first result is gonna have a skip of 10 for the, the next link parameter that is provided. And so it, it gives you the, the helper hints to be able to page through that. But if you want to do the counters yourself, there is a, a, a parameter, I'm sorry, a, a field in your return results uh, called uh, next link, and it will put the top and the skip. It'll calculate all that for you. Select allows you to narrow down the amount of data you get per object. So if you provide a select, say you, you want to pull all the pools back, but you only want the name of the pool, and say you want the load balance mode. So when you do this, then when it returns the data set to you, it's only gonna give you the name and the load balance of each pool. And then of course we already talked about the filter. That would be partition equals, and then whatever your, your partition name is. And so anyway, there's a, a bunch of different options that you can use. Uh, to, to work with the data being returned from the big IP. One thing I'll note with the pagination, with when you're, when you're paging through with these, this works on collections and subcollections only. So if you're gonna return, say you have 50 data groups defined on your big IP. This will work through each data group, so it'll return your top 10 data groups. It will not work within the data group on the records because that is not a subcollection. And so when you pull things back like data groups, when you pull back things like connection tables, you need to be very careful about the data you're returning. If it's not a collection or a subcollection, you can't page through it. So if you happen to have 150,000 connections from this guy, that's a big set of data and you might deal with some, some timeouts and, and other uh, you know, bad things. So you need to be very careful the more you can limit down this query. Say, instead of, I want all the connections from this guy, I want all of the connections from this guy to this IP. So then your, your query parameter that we had up there, you would want to define the CS client adder, the client side client port, the client side server adder, and the client side server port. And that way, the, the larger um, options you use to narrow it down, the less data you'll get back. So hopefully this has been helpful on how to work with the return data from Big IP by using query parameters, and uh, we'll catch you next time.